Hi everyone. With Thanksgiving approaching, I always like to give thanks for the people that have helped me to get to where I am today. And there's someone else that doesn't really get a lot of credit in your life that helps you every time you get out of bed. Every breath you take, this person's helping you. Well, this person's not really a person. It's the atmosphere. The atmosphere is always helping you in ways that you don't even think about. Every time you take a breath, <sighs> thanks atmosphere. Every time you enjoy a nice sip of drink from a straw, <sighs> thanks atmosphere. That's what this video is going to talk about. This video is going to talk about how a straw works and how the atmosphere actually enables this to happen. If I were to ask you on day one, how does a straw work? What would you say? Well, you, you, you basically pull the liquid up. You draw the liquid up. You know, you, you suck the liquid up the straw. Why are you asking me this question? Well, we got to think about this. There's really no reason liquid would just be pulled up somewhere. N nothing can really pull like that. Something always has to push. So what is pushing the liquid up the straw? Well, of course, the atmosphere. The atmosphere pushes the liquid up the straw every time you take a drink, but only when you want it to. So we're going to talk about how the atmosphere actually pushes liquid up the straw to enable you to drink from it. Before you take a drink, when you're just next to your drink, the straw sitting in the drink, let's talk about where the air is. Well, the air is of course inside the straw, and the air is of course outside the straw. Equal concentrations all around. Everything the atmosphere touches, it's exerting a pressure. Atmospheric pressure, 1 atm, depending on where you are. Uh, or 14.7 pounds per square inch. Let's represent the air pressure as this downward arrow because everything the atmosphere touches, it's pushing down. And I want to show equal strengths here, e equal size arrows, because while it's at equilibrium, the atmosphere is touching everywhere equally or pushing down everywhere equally. That's why when this is sitting here, nothing's happening. You know, it's air is the air is pushing on the outside of the straw down, but it's also pushing on the inside of the straw down. So it's at equilibrium. Well, what happens when you go to take a drink? So let's say you bring yourself up to the straw and mind the artwork here, just assume that you're now going to be drinking out of the straw. Let's talk about what you actually do. Are you pulling the liquid up yourself? No. All you're doing is enabling this air inside the straw to leave the straw. Again, what are you doing? You're removing air from the straw. Let's talk about how that happens. Well, if you've already had the in-class lesson on how breathing works, you probably understand this. But if not, I'll give you a crash course right now. When you breathe, what are you really doing in your body? You're causing your lungs to expand. You're expanding your lungs. And to do that, really, you're pulling your diaphragm down. That's when you breathe. You pull the diaphragm down, which stretches your lungs out. So inside your lungs, by expanding them, the volume goes up. Think about what that does to the pressure. If there's now increased volume, there's now going to be decreased pressure because the same force is now spread out over a larger area. So the pressure inside your lungs goes down. Again, don't think about straw right now. We're just thinking about breathing. When I breathe in, I expand my lungs, and as a result, I create low pressure inside my lungs. I essentially create a vacuum, a partial vacuum. As a result, I have low pressure inside, normal pressure outside. The atmosphere forces air down my uh, trachea into my lungs. And that's how breathing works. That's how you breathe in. Well, how do you breathe out? Just the opposite. You pull your diaphragm up, which causes your lungs to shrink a little bit. Your lungs have shrunk. The volume of your lungs goes down. As a result, you have smaller area, same force, you're going to increase the pressure. So now you have high pressure in your lungs, and that's going to cause that high pressure air to be forced out your mouth. So breathing isn't just about pulling air in and pushing air out. It's about you changing the size of your lungs so that the atmosphere works uh, for you. Again, every time you take a breath, <sighs> thank you, atmosphere. Let's relate this to uh, using the straw. To use a straw, you're going to do the same act that you would when you breathe. Now, you're not going to pull the liquid down your trachea. You know, your body naturally will, will work differently like that. I guess your, what's your epiglottis is that thing that hangs down and covers the right channel. Uh, 
But anyway, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're nonetheless increasing the size of your lungs, which creates low pressure in your lungs. And as a result, the air in the straw, which is attached to your mouth, gets forced into your lungs. So you, the air is forced into your lungs. Now, not all of the air, just some of the air. So maybe that air particle, that air particle, that air particle are going to be forced into your lungs. As a result, what happens inside the straw? Which variable did we just alter? Well, we just removed air particles, so therefore n, number of particles, has gone down. What's the result of that in terms of pressure? Well, it's the same area inside the straw, but now we have fewer particles, which means we're going to exert a smaller force. So it's less force, which means my pressure is going to go down. N and P are directly proportional. One goes down, the other goes down. So you have essentially created a low pressure zone inside the straw. You don't think about it, but that's what you're doing. Low pressure. This arrow, these arrows show the pressure that the air is exerting. So you have turned this arrow into a smaller arrow. Did you change the atmosphere? No. So the atmosphere is still just as strong as it was, but now inside the straw we have less pressure pushing down. What's the result going to be here? Well, if we have more pressure forcing the water down outside the straw and less pressure forcing the water down inside the straw, the result is going to be that the atmosphere pushes the water down and as a result up the straw. And the water is going to be forced up the straw. So that's how you use a straw. You're not sucking the liquid up the straw or drawing the liquid up the straw. What you're doing is creating the low pressure zone necessary for the atmosphere to do the work for you. So that's why I say, ah, thank you, atmosphere. Now for part two of this video, I want to talk about what would happen if you tried to drink out of a longer straw. Well, I just so have one, happen to have one here. It's uh, three straws kind of put together. Let's see if I can drink out of this. Mm. Okay, I got a little bit. It's, it's not easy. Definitely takes more work, but I was able to drink out of this straw. So a question we can ask is, what if I made this twice as long or 10 times as long? Or theoretically, what if I made this a mile long or 10 miles long? Is there a point at which you can't possibly drink out of a straw, even if you had lungs of steel, even if the strongest uh, person in the world tried to drink out of a straw, is there a point at which you can't drink out of a straw anymore? Well, let's talk about that. What did you do to make the straw work? You changed your lungs, which reduced air, and you shrank this arrow down. You made this a smaller arrow. Did you make this arrow go away? No. There's still air in here, but that arrow is smaller. What if you had really powerful lungs? You know, you're like a, a, a professional trumpet player, and you had incredibly powerful lungs. Well, you could pull even more air out of here, even more air out of here. Maybe that goes away and that goes away. And now you have a really small arrow down here. Really small arrow. Well, you're still not going to be able to create a true perfect vacuum, but let's say you could. Let's say you could. Or, or you use some kind of machine that could theoretically remove all the air from inside the straw. Now, if you actually removed all the air inside a plastic straw, it would cr crumple in on the sides. But let's just use our imaginations here. What if you were able to remove all the air from the straw, so there was literally no downward pressure in there. Well, obviously the water's gonna go up now, but the question is, will it go up forever? Will this just rise forever? If this were a mile long, would the atmosphere push it up forever? The answer is no. Here's why. Imagine this is a very long straw, and imagine you had a superhuman person or a machine that could create a literal perfect vacuum inside this straw so that there was absolutely no air. Now, of course, this would be the person or the machine up top, so that's closed off at the top, and you have zero air inside, which means you have no air pushing down, and you have normal atmospheric pressure pushing down on the outside. The question again, could you or some machine, theoretically, drink this if it were infinitely long? Let's talk about what happens as this rises up. The water's going to start to rise. The water's going to start to rise. The water's going to start to rise. Keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up. As it rises, a counter force starts developing. 
what is that counter force that's going to counteract the upward movement that the atmosphere enables? Well, it's something you all knew since kindergarten, gravity. As the water rises, its weight gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And the weight of this water is pushing down. Now, this is a little confusing because I have all downward pointing arrows. But remember that these arrows down here are actually pushing the water up, even though they're down. Because it's forcing the water down in the cup, and the only way it has to go is up the straw. So really, the atmosphere is pushing the water up. Gravity is pushing the water down. And it's the balance of these two forces that tells you how high the water is going to get. So here's the question. Is the atmosphere infinitely strong? Think about it. No. At, we can quantify how strong the atmosphere is. It's 1 atm, or 14.7 uh, psi, or 760 tor. It's a quantifiable number, and it is not infinitely strong. So you're going to get to a point where the limit of the atmosphere pushing the water up matches the weight of the water the gravity weight of the water pushing it down and the water is going to stop at a certain height even if you could superhumanly remove a hundred percent of the air and create a perfect vacuum you will stop this is the theoretical maximum height of water you can actually count uh, quantify this you can do the math on it with on a standard pressure day 1 atm it ends up being about 10.3 meters or around 34 feet and again, this assumes you can remove every single air particle from this. Could you or I or any other human do this? No. So, you know, they could even make a competition out of it. How high could you draw liquid up a straw? I'd say humans could probably get it about 20, 25 feet or so, but you're never going to be able to get it this high. And even if you could remove all the air, there's no physical way in this universe we occupy for normal atmospheric pressure here on Earth to get that straw more than 34 feet or 10.3 meters. Now, if you increase the atmosphere somehow, you know, if you took this little experiment to uh, Venus, uh, I, I believe, I should have fact-checked before I made this video, I believe Venus has a stronger atmosphere. If not, please don't quote me. But if you go to another planet with a stronger atmosphere, then, well, you could actually get it higher than 10.3. But on this Earth that we occupy, you cannot go higher than 10.3 meters. There is a theoretical maximum height because the atmosphere is only so strong and eventually the weight of that water will counter it. So I hope this cleared up some misconceptions you had. Remember, the main idea I want you to understand about the straw is that you are not just sucking liquid up a straw. You are removing air from the straw, removing particles, N goes down. As a result, you create low pressure. This demonstrates the NP relationship, the direct proportion, and as a result, the atmosphere does the rest of the work for you. So, as I've said before, thank you, atmosphere.